What if your kid could start investing before they even start kindergarten? And then fall in love with the process and keep steadily investing so that they become financially secure or even financially free before most people get their first raise. We all know that the earlier you start investing, the better. But how do you help your kids start investing sooner before they even turn 18 so that they can take advantage of the magic of compounding earlier? In today's video, I'm gonna give you the next four steps and my seven steps to how to teach your kids to invest so that they love the process. You can find steps one to three in this video here, so make sure you bookmark that, come back to it if you haven't seen that yet. Now, these next four steps can stand alone, but the framework in its entirety is really powerful here. So let's quickly go over those first three steps. Again, do a deep dive in that video because you're definitely going to want to know how everything works. The first step is open a family investment bank account. This may be the most powerful thing you can do for your kids so that they can really feel compounding in action. So make sure you go back and watch that video. Step number two is to talk about money decisions as a family. This step alone probably cost me a decade of my own investing into adulthood, so I highly recommend that you learn how to talk about money with your kids. And the third step was open up that custodial IRA account so that you can see how kids are already investing and their money is already growing. I presented a really good way that your kids, even ages one and five, like my kids, can earn income to be able to contribute to this account. All right, let's jump in. Okay, step number four, right? is to look at different real estate investing opportunities together. This is gonna start your kid's mindset down the path towards diversification. Plus real estate is a fantastic way to build wealth. You can do this by touring local potential rental properties, even if you have no intention of buying them, by physically walking through a house and saying, oh, a renter would put their bedroom in here. They would pay X amount per month. Hmm, the utilities are going to cost X amount per month and show them these numbers on a spreadsheet. Even if they just have the physical sensation of walking around what would be an apartment building, that can really expand their mindset about what is possible. If you're doing passive real estate investing, you can also walk them through those projected financials, the projected returns that they could get by investing a certain amount of money at the end of that five-year hold period, right? I'll link to our free course below if this is a new type of investing you've never heard heard of. It's passive real estate investing as a group, basically leveraging economies of scale to invest in commercial real estate buildings with a team that knows what they're doing and that you can actually talk to. So I'll give you another example of how your kids can actually invest in real estate through some sort of simulation. This is from Julie Lamb. She's the owner of Good Egg Investments. And she has her or offers it to her kids if they want to invest any money in a portion of the investing that she's doing. So for example, if she's going to put $50,000 into a new multifamily building, right, that that's being purchased in this syndication form, this passive real estate investing, her kids might decide to put in 1,000 of that $50,000. Now they're going to share in all of the returns for their proportion of that investment. So I believe $1,000 of 50,000 is 2%. Right. So every time that Julie gets a distribution check, that cash, regular cash flow quarterly distributions from that investment, she's going to give 2% to her kids. At the end, when that building sells and there's a big upside payment at the end, 2% is going to go to her kids. She's going to bring them along the journey too and show them the different communications throughout the quarterly financial statements, even updates. Look, honey, they put in a new pool. They put in a new fitness center. This is what they're doing with your investing dollars to be able to grow that money. Now, their name won't te technically be on the investment because they're not 18 yet, but they can really share in those profits and they can also share in the losses, which can be a hard one to do, but an essential lesson to learn. This is where helping your kids pay for their own college tuition can come in. One way to do this is to purchase real estate so that that property will appreciate in value such that it will pay for their college tuition. Now, I know that you're actually doing the purchasing here, but you can get your kids working inside this business so they understand how it works and they can even contribute to it as you go. You could also help them invest funds into a 529 account or another type of investment account that they'll be able to pull out of when they get to college. They're investing their own funds in this or they're starting a business to be able to put money aside to be able to pay their college tuition. 
Basically here, your kids can help pay for their college tuition if they have sources of income and if they're able to get that income working harder inside an investment vehicle. All right, number five is to use games. There's a lot of great stock market investing games out there for kids to try in a no risk way. These games can provide opportunities to test different investing strategies without really losing any of their own money or any money at all, really. The stock market is made up of thousands of companies and we as families and even our children are purchasing money from purchasing things with their money from these companies. So it's natural then that they can start to learn about what it might be like to invest and share in the profits of those companies, which is essentially stock market investing. Now there's all kinds of games out there. We interviewed the owner of Rapunzel Investments, for instance, so I'll link to that podcast down below um, to learn more about that specific tool to be able to actually win prizes as they're investing along other people their own age that they, they can actually win scholarship money by doing this game which is pretty cool basically games help them learn in a really easy and friendly way and a fun way too before i go any further go ahead and like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already it really helps me know which content is helping people the most all right step number six this is really essential because you're going to want to start thinking about how you can educate your kids in delayed gratification. I like the book Grit by Angela Duckworth here because grit is really a type of delayed gratification or the ability to delay your gratification, I should say. She defines grit as a combination of passion and perseverance and shows why this is a critical element for achieving long-term goals. You can use her findings in three big ways to help your kids enjoy the long-term process of investing. Here's how. First, by talking about money, touring different investment properties, playing different games, starting to talk about opening up a business and earning money, you're cultivating a variety of different interests in your kids that all circle around investing in money. You're giving them a way to find something that they're passionate about that deals with money, the passion piece here. This has to be a true no pressure environment for true passion to sort of evolve and manifest on its own. But cultivating interest is an essential piece of having the grit to be able to achieve those long-term goals, that passion piece. All right, second is practice. Deliberate practice involves setting goals, seeking feedback, and focusing on the areas that need improvement. For instance, in that allowance system, you can talk about a different goal associated with that savings account. What would they like to save up for? You're practicing that delayed gratification, but you're also practicing every month contributing money into that account. You can also talk about what you might do with that family bank investment account. It could be a little bit more exciting. I actually did the calculations and my six-year-old is gonna have $13,000 by the time she's 12. What? Okay, the third concept that Angela talks about in her book is to foster a growth mindset. Now, all my high achieving parents out there are gonna know a lot about this, but actually instilling this in our kids is a little bit tricky. We wanna to talk to them so that they understand that challenges and failures are really just opportunities to learn and to grow. We wanna reframe what failure means here. Now you can do this while they're riding a bike, while they're learning to ski, falling down, right? It's not failing, you're not not learning, right? You're That's an actual act of making progress forward to getting better at something. The same applies to investing. For instance, in these no risk gains of investing, they can invest millions of dollars into something and that failure is gonna feel less important or less weighty than the investing of real dollars, of seeing their savings account go down to zero. But even if that happens, right? Even if they see mommy and daddy lose money in an investment, right? We have to start within ourselves reframing this failure that this is just part of the process and I'm learning and growing as I, as I embark upon even these failures. Angela suggests that you change your language around failures and successes to emphasize effort over innate ability. This looks like say, you're really dedicated to saving money every month as opposed to you're a great saver, right? You're putting value on the effort of making that contribution over and over and over again, not sort of the end result or look how much you've saved up, right? Put emphasis on the effort. Okay, our seventh step to instilling a love for investing in our kids is to start to talk about the lifestyle that they want. 
Now, this is a new form that I've read about that people are getting coached in careers, especially in college, right? Instead of saying, what job do you want to do one day? It's more like, what lifestyle do you want to have one day? And what are some career opportunities that can fit into that lifestyle? Help your kids see that steadily investing is going to give them more opportunities to do whatever they want with their time as they grow up, as they evolve into that different lifestyle. I know at one point, if you had asked me what lifestyle do I want, I would have wanted to say, well, I want to go kayaking and skiing every day, and I want to have my friends over for dinner every night and cook big feasts, right? So being able to say, well, that's a great lifestyle. So if you're investing earlier on, you're going to be able to support that because you're going to have more passive income that you can use to free up your time to do all those awesome activities. Steadily investing helps set your kids up for more options, more flexibility, and more freedom to pursue a life or career that is most meaningful to them and not just chasing a paycheck. In her book, Angela says, grit is sticking with your future day in, day out, not just for the month, not just for the week, but for years and working really hard to make that future a reality. Okay, take a look at this video here in case you missed those steps one to three and we'll see you next time.